My well, friends, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a, a test of loyalty. Who here would rather be undercover in Westminster Abbey? Who here would rather be in the rain in Glasgow Green? <laughs> well, that's settled then. It's, of course, a tale of two cities, is it not? In London, the subjects are required to swear an oath of allegiance to the Crown. In Scotland, in Glasgow, the citizens choose to swear an oath, an oath of loyalty to Scotland. It's said that I uh, understand that the homage of the people is now to be said silently. <laughs> which will stop people having to swear at their television sets. <laughs> well, in Glasgow, our decoration for Scotland will be loud and proud. <laughs> now, countries can move backwards and they can move forwards. In medieval Scotland, the king had to take an oath of allegiance to the people, to the community of the realm. In 21st century England, they think the people should take an oath of allegiance to the king. That's the country moving backwards. But Scotland from 1997 was moving forwards. We established our parliament. We established social change for the better. We made progress towards independence. But that, fellow citizens, has come to a halt. We are now in a situation where qualified Scots can't get in to university, where our proud universal health service has people going overseas to pay because they can't wait and suffer in pain. We're in the energy capital of Europe. Folk can't afford to turn on their heating. That is the reality of Scotland today. And on the constitutional question, it's turned from being now is not the time to a polite no to get stuffed. That's the reality of Scotland today. And therefore, what is to be done? Well, look around. Look around you now. Look at the march we've seen had. The greatest march in Scotland since COVID. One of the greatest marches in Scotland ever. The strongest political force in Scotland is the national movement. In ancient times, the, the city of Sparta had no walls. It didn't need them. The people were the walls of Sparta. Well, you are the walls of Scotland. You are Scotland's defenders. You are Scotland's protectors. And you will ensure progress for our country. So the national movement, the most powerful movement in Scotland, has to declare itself independent from any political party. It has to do the thinking. It has to do the preparation, the policy work, the international lobbying, the activism that we see today. And it's got to prepare ourselves and the people for a world where we approach our objective, where it'll take dedicated democratic action to wrest our independence from Westminster. And that national movement has to require something of political parties. Next year at the general election, the political parties who believe in independence should stand all under one banner. With a single first paragraph in every manifesto which says we are seeking a mandate to negotiate independence for Scotland. And secondly, we have to make sure that our voice today from this, the most powerful movement in Scotland, is heard loud and clear. That we want our independence and we want it now. So what do we want? When do we want it? I think other people in Glasgow are going to have to hear it. So what do we want? When do we want it? One more time for the benefit of those in Westminster Abbey. What do we want?
When do we want it? Yeah. 